<laughs> Jadi start. Okay, start kan. Okay, good evening everyone. All right, so we are from um, uh, group. The, our group name is PRJ, if I'm mistaken, yesterday. Yeah. All right, so uh, before we start with the presentation, I would like to introduce uh, my group members. Okay, um, this is um, Halim from FSMP. Okay, we have Warda from FPP, uh, Bad from FKSW, and Yati from IPB. Yep, and um, to do the presentation, I'd like to invite um, Dr. Yati to <laughs> to assist the group, yeah, with the presentation. Thanks. Oh, yeah, sorry. My name is Oscar. I'm from FPP. Yeah. FPP. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hidayati from IPB, so I'm the new group. That's why I'm presenting, obviously. <laughs> So basically about the TEL, we identify three main strengths that, current, that uh, relates to the weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So the first thing that we think the strength about TEL is uh, the traditional PNP2 technology. We are shifting from traditional to PNP. What good about it is that, um, first of course, it makes uh, teaching and learning easier. Secondly, we are talking about lecturer with uh, many students. We are, not, no, we are not talking about 20, 30 students. We are talking about hundreds of students in one class. So evaluation could be easy. Online tests, quizzes, then you can get the marks right away using you know, Google Scholar whatsoever. So that's the good thing about uh, TEL. And then the other thing about this what is good is the, like, the other click set is easy for you to give uh, explanation. When talking about sciences, last time when you want to show about pathway sciences, you have to draw, you know. Now it's all in a video form, so easy for them to learn and uh, get the idea behind every single theory. Okay, but then, uh, uh, so this creates the opportunities whereby there's actually going to promote more effectiveness when it comes to teaching, teaching and learning because they're actually available of resources. But then the limitation is that, do we have enough ICT tools? Do we enough, have enough facilities? You are talking about conducting uh, access, uh, quizzes uh, and tutorial, everything in class. Everybody have to have their own tablets, laptops. Do we have a very large hall that can supply like power supply? Even here, we don't have enough. Can we conduct that? Okay. And then the good thing about this is that when we do uh, online teaching and learning, I saw many lecturers start to have Q and A session, which is projected online, which is very good. Okay. So students sometimes they don't like to raise their hand, you know, asking questions. But then when you do it online, you have like many questions. But again, access to Wi-Fi, access to tabs. Some university provide those, but can we? Okay, that's the limit, the limit, the weakness and limitation. So the threats is the support system, I can say. We can have the lecturer that willing, we can have the student that willing. Student must be willing, they suka that kind of things. But then, do we have money for maintenance, facilities again? So that will be the threats. If we don't have those two, regardless, you have all the technology, all the website, whatever, all the software, we can't do it. Okay, so the second strength that we thought about TEL is the openness in education. Every information is like open online. There is no such thing as the syllabus is like this is it. You can have all information. Okay, so openness, it creates opportunities to create students that are creative. There is no limits. You teach them A, they can evolve B, C, D, and E. It's all online. They can find all information, but then, I think that could be the weaknesses as well as openness can close door to craftiness, create creativeness. Because everything is just there online. It's all available, then what's new? What are they creating? They are taking everything online, then they develop it. Maybe you just report it, but then what is it new coming from them? It might as well lead towards the closed door of creativeness if it is not properly monitored. Okay, so that is the, the weaknesses. The other weaknesses is that through TEL, it might lead to a lack of interaction. Everything goes online, you're asking questions online. You call the student in front, can they answer? 
for example, when you go to interview these days, they will say like, I give you three minutes, tell us, tell me about your PhD project, make sure I understand. Can we do it? Can you do it? Because through online, everything, they just put everything in there. They didn't learn how to narrow it down, focus down the point. They are not trained to answer people in a very short way, yet very precise. So that's what I thought. <laughs> so the threat is monitoring. OK, we are talking about uh, open access information, right? When we give our student um, assignment, assignment title A, they give us more information, which is not in the syllabus, but the information is correct. So how do we assess? If everything is correct, will all of them score full marks? What's the limit? Same goes to the exam question. We go question level five, level six synthesis. We can't stop the idea that is beyond syllabus when it's actually the right things directly answer the question. It just is not covering the syllabus because we promote open idea. So how do we do the marking? So if we really uh, apply that, uh, we have to revise our curriculum, that kind of things. It's kind of like, yes, are we ready? Okay, so that's going to be the threats monitoring. Us as a lecturer to monitor what's the limit and what's not. And if they go online, everything, all information, is it the right thing? Is it already the tersasaba monitoring? Challenge on us, I think, as a lecturer. We have to be the guidance. Are we ready? They know everything these days. Okay, so the third strength is the generation gap. So when we are shifting from traditional PNP to the technology things, students will like this. This is who they are. They like video, they like visual, you know? And then, um, so it's actually kind of uh, good things to do this in university. And then the other thing about this is that it creates uh, opportunities for knowledge transfer, like Prof said, sometimes you learn more from your student when it comes to technology and all. But then, when you're talking about gaps, it's good for students. Technology is good from the eye of student. How about the lecturer itself? It could be a limitation. Are we all ready to apply all this technology? This is, uh, maybe not all generation, maybe young generation also have very little knowledge when it comes to technology, which I think proven through the statistic that Pro showed earlier, not all, Faculty currently do the mock teaching. They don't even pass the smart to UMS. You know, sometimes for certain people, smartphone is complicated <coughs> enough as a lecturer. Can we guide the student that if we ourselves is not ready? Okay, so that could be the threat is actually the readiness. We can have UMS provide every single facilities, every single tools, but us, are we ready? We could be the threats if we are not trained and we are not ready. So that's from us. Thank you. Someone uh, mentioned the highlight of what she's saying. She said a lot. Okay. Adela, kalau kita kan, sorry, I speak in BM. Okay. Masalahnya kalau kita tak tak tengok dari perspektif student tu sendiri. Hmm. Yeah, kadang-kadang student tu kan uh, Bukannya Dia orang ada uh, Contoh lah Dia orang ada iPhone Ada Android And we use Sometimes Some of the application Meant to be for Android So and then For the lecturer yang Guna Apple There will be Application for the Apple And then Why not us As a university Provide them a booth Or counter that uh, Have having that This type of uh, Accessibility and then sometimes as student ni pun kadang-kadang walaupun ada gadget tapi gadget dia orang tu bila kita tengok sedih uh, pecah sini pecah sana do do apa <laughs> adakah dia orang ni ready for this kind of method and then we should apa make make something like for accessibility more easiest and then itulah yang cakap yang kata generation gap ni kan kadang-kadang we as a lecturer uh, think that especially the young one uh, tahu pasal teknologi, tahu pasal teknologi and then suddenly bila kita pergi masuk benda tu kita dah jadi bidang terjun and we have no ideas about to how to use the technology 
because we have a lack of uh, something what we manage apa yang kita cakap tu tak ada orang nak mengajar kita we have become explorative kita explorative ni ada ke benda tu betul ada salah uh, that, that mean uh, kadang-kadang they, they think that we expect to know everything but which usually we don't know nothing uh, basically like that lah yeah. anything to, to add? <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for me, I think um, the key point which was being mentioned by most of the group members which just presented just now is the readiness. I think there's a gap between the readiness of the students and the readiness of the lecturer. Yeah, right? I mean, students are ready to implement all these technologies because they are from the from generation Y and, and also the early generation Z. Yeah, but for us, I mean, are we ready to do that? Some of us, we may be ready, but um, there might be some inadequacy in terms of um, the university to provide us with um, these softwares and some stuff like that. Yeah, there are some limitations about that. So it will um, basically um, become a, I don't know how to say it, you know, like, I mean, it, it will become like um, factors that will um, basically influence our readiness as well. Yeah, and also with all the workloads by the lecturers and stuff like that. Sometimes, you know, we want to, let's say, I mean, I have a lecture at two o'clock, I mean, in the afternoon, but in the morning, I have like meetings until like 12 or one o'clock, belum habis meeting, kan? So you really want to download that video, and sometimes, I mean, to download one video, a video of like 15, 30 minutes, okay, it takes time. So, I mean, that defines readiness as well, meaning to say we are not prepared to the lecture, and then we'll do the lecture in a traditional way. And students sometimes say, oh, they, I mean, they will assume that, okay, I mean, this lecture, lecturer is a boring person. So I think that's um, the issue that we have to tackle, as well as um, the, um, uh, you know, I mean, the tools itself, you know, like, I mean, um, when we have open access to everything, I mean, I mean how, we, how we are going to filter, um, you know, what is right and what is wrong in our teaching later. Yep, I mean, especially when we download, um, I mean, this is from my own um, opinion. Lah. Yeah, um, you know, we download sources from, I mean, Western context where they use curse words. I mean, you know, stuff like that in a video. I mean, are we allowed to show this kind of stuff to our students yeah, due to the culture constraints and stuff like that? So, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Are we allowed? Yeah. Are we allowed? You know, like sometimes. Take something a video from Harvard. Yeah, like I mean, for an example, I mean, you know, my professors overseas they use the BS word. I mean, frequently, you know, in conversation, you know, that's a BS. This guy BS. I mean, BS. I mean, you know, you guys know, right? I mean, what is that? <laughs> so I mean, and then in some lecture content. <laughs> Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys pun boleh, apa pun Tapi. You know, like for us, let's say we download this one le very interesting lecture or a TED talk. You know, TED talk, I used to use TED talk in my class. Yeah, but I mean, some of the words are very, um, especially in a Malaysian context. For me, I don't care. Yeah, but I mean, some students, I mean, or, uh, I mean, I mean, due to the culture constraint, let's put it that way. You know, it could be, you know, a limitation for us, you know, and then some students, if they feel offended, you know, they can, you know, like use that, okay? And then, you know, when they fill up the PK-07, okay, that's when they will like shoot this lecturer, like, okay, he's not prepared. I mean, the, um, you know, the materials are actually not suitable to be, you know, like showing class and stuff like that, yeah. Can anyone just respond to this? Should we be so sensitive to limit ourselves? Or should we re-educate or should we re-educate our students? Can't. Those who come from UK. Well, it doesn't... It's okay. I mean, it's okay actually to expose them to this because otherwise they don't know what happened. How is it all about? Yeah. But we have to... Yeah, it's saying that of understanding perhaps um, um, mind you there might be this one Wonderful. this is used 
uh, as time to time, it's usually used by this, it's normal conversation. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, but don't take uh, any offensive or whatever. This is for educational purposes. Uh, yeah, I used to say that also. Otherwise, there will be an, in a shell thinking, yeah. oh, this is how it is. Uh, it is in Mal uh, Malaysia. So if it, this is how it is outside of Malaysia, perhaps. But uh, because later on, you'll get a culture shock thinking, why are they hugging me outside of my uh, we don't We don't live here. I've never mm. known that mm -hmm. they live there. Uh, so, so, it's, so we don't want to confine that thinking. Yeah. This is how it is outside of Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. But disclaimer is important. It should be okay. Yeah. Should that be okay, but for educational purposes, that terms yeah. is for educational purposes. I think this is a wonderful solution. Thank you. Yeah.